Okay, guys, let us start. Okay, uh, so the thoughts concept today, it's very, very important. And uh, so basically, right, Talk about select thoughts. Very very important here. We, we, in UI path, right? Always we are going to talk about UI path. So uh, we are going to talk about right now select thoughts. So what is the select thought? So basically, right? Uh, you know, we are going to deal with the different types of uh, applications. For like example, Windows application, web application, and Citrix and uh, SAP oriented applications. So most probably we are going to see all these applications very frequently. We want to dealing with the different types of applications. So how we have to deal with so how we are going to get the data from the UI or how we are going to push data to the UI. So all these things would be done by using the select thoughts. So to automate any user interface, that means that the respect of the application type. So interact with the different types of controls on it. It may be web application or Windows application, irrespective of that one. We are going to dealing with different types of control on the screen. So that let's say example button, text box, drop down, on so on, window button, list box, on so on. We are going to do, you know, deal with different types of controls. So basically, most of the application they are rely on the uh, what I'm trying to the screen positions. But screen positions is very difficult to automate because if you minimize it right. The screen position will be changed. If you maximize the screen positions will be changed. But so because this this, this is not all dependable. That means that I don't want I don't want to take risk even to, when doing automation. If the screen is you know uh, basically it depends on the positions where we are. I mean it's difficult to do automation to overcome this problem. To overcome this problem, UiPath uh, introduced. Uh, I mean to say that select thoughts. So that, that is called selector. So basically, selector stores attributes of UI elements. So what is a graphical user interface? If you could see any HTML page, see basically, right, all are, you know, um, in the form of rendering, in the form of HTML only, right, web pages, right? So what will happen in the web pages, if you could see, it is in the form of, like, attributes. In the form of, it will be form of, like, attributes and XML format. So automatically, Selectors are generating by Studio itself. All the selectors are automatically, which is going to be generated by Studio. We will see how the selectors are going to be generated from the Studio. That Studio is nothing but UiPath Studio. So basically, a selectors will be would be looking like this: Node one, Node two, and so on, Node n. So what is that? The last node is the GUI element. Let's say example, you are trying to scrap a text box from the screen. So the last node is nothing but text box. Okay, the last node is the GUI element. What exactly you are trying to scrap it? All the previous are and that is called root node. That means that so you may be opening window from there. You have one um, one parent sub parent inside that you have sub parent and sequentially you have finally you have a text box that is called the exact UI element you are looking for. But you, you, but uh, what I'm trying to say, a selector has come up with all the parent information. We will see that example. That we'll see how the selector will be generated. So about selectors, every attribute has an assigned value which is represent in a here. So if you pick any attribute with the constant value, that means that this is very very important. When trying to um, get the selector from your element. So let's say example one at one um, attribute which contains some constant value. If attribute value change, then selector will not work. Let's say example the title equals to ABC. Obviously, right, every web page having the title attribute by default. So title equals to ABC. The same selector you are trying to the same application you have been open in some other mission where the title will be XYZ. So in this case. The application will work fine in the system one, but the same application will not work in the second application, second application or second mission because here I assume that bot is assumed that the title equals to ABC always, but 
coming to the second application, the title got changed to XYZ. Obviously, what will happen? The select was is not matched with what I configured from the uh, what I'm trying to say from the card. So obviously, it's going to throw an exception saying that U element is not found on the screen. So to to resolve these problems, right? We will we will, we will have wild card select card that we'll discuss in the next slide. Selectors are stored in the properties panel. Basically, where the selectors can be seen. So I'm inside the properties panel. Inside that, we have a you know, sub category called input target. Inside the target, you will have the selector. So this is important, very very important. Selectors with wildcards. So basically, wildcards are the symbols that are replace one or more multiple characters in a string. Let's take example, the, the title may be vary in, from application to application. In the first application, the title is ABC. And I mean to say that in the first mission, because based on the logged in user, maybe title may be changed. Okay, so what will happen? The first mission title would be ABC and the second mission XYZ. So what will happen? This is not a constant value. We assumed that this is a constant, but this is not a constant value. This is very from application to um, a mission to mission. So in this case, what we have to do, so we have to replace this ABC with the wildcard wildcard characters. So basically, there are two types of you know, uh, wildcard wildcard characters available in a UI path. The number one is asterisk and question mark. If entire string is going to be changed, that, that, that means that the ABC is the one word, right? The one word or you know, multiple words are going to be changed. I mean to say that it is changed to you know, machine to machine. So that time what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the asterisk. That means that replace one or more characters. If I replace this asterisk, so which is going to assume that it is a dynamic value. If any single characters are changing, let's take example here, A, B, C is a changing. A, B is a constant and C is changing in different you know, machine to machine. The C alone, you can replace with the question mark so that it is going to be, you know, assume that dynamic, you know, selectors are forming. So uh, that is what select. I mean, wild cards are going to be used here. The selector editor. We have an editor available in the UI Path Studio, which is going to be automatically generate the selectors of the wild card by using attached to live element operator. This we will see. You know, when we're working with this, uh, what I'm trying to say, our uh, examples, we will see this one. Full selector versus partial selectors. Uh, right now, I'm just uh, uh, putting on hold. We'll discuss when we are discussing about you know uh, what I'm trying to say. Recording concepts, and this is I'm just introducing uh, one uh, uh, tool here, which is a part of your Path Studio. It's a very very important. So this is called UI Path Explorer. UI Path Explorer is a basically used to you know form a selector. Let us flip to the um, UI Path Studio. Let's create one uh, project UI element demo. Or select us what I see here. So here, right? Um, so UI Path Explorer is basically is used to uh, what I'm trying to say, create dynamic selector because we cannot always expect the static selector. So most probably, we're always working with the dynamic selector. So what will happen to choose the best selector? Remember to add or remove attributes, add parent or child tags, use wildcard or replace common values. This is what. We can remove the attributes or we can remove add the attributes. Attributes in the sense you might have here, right? The title is an attribute. So like this, the ID is one attribute and we have a name is one attribute. 
So we'll we'll get the different types of uh, attributes that I'll show you by using UA Path Explorer here. So I just created one project called uh, Selectors Demo. Here we go. This is called Launch UI Path Explorer. I'm just clicking on this. It is going to open and separate window. Here we go. So this is called UI Path you know, Explorer or tool, which which is going to use to what I'm trying to say, create a dynamic selector. Now, let's take example. This is one application. Okay. Now I'm just clicking. This is a one WPF Windows application, which we are going to use very frequently for automating this. Now, I just want to get the selector of this one. How I'm going to get the selector? Click this one, and just see all the U uh, elements are highlighting with yellow box. So wherever I'm going, you see here I'm going with the text box, I'm going with the button, okay, I'm going with label, if co of co label also it is highlighting. Now this is one table, this is the first cell, I'm just, I just want to see the selector of this one. So this is how we have to select this selector, I'm just clicking this. See obviously which is going to come up with XML format. So what is XML format here? So that is what I, this is what node 1 and this is the node 2. The node 2 is the last node which is going to talk about the correct uh, selector. I mean to say the correct UI element. So what is the correct UI element, uh, current UI element here? This is a UI element. This is a cell 1. So this is what I need, right? But this is exactly, I am not getting exact this um, select I mean this position ID alone it is come up with the parent information so what is the parent here so what is the application name what is the class name what is the title so what is the title here create, create expense report so this is called attributes if you want to add any text I mean to say that see here I'm just remove add or attributes or remove attributes for for making unique selector so keep it in your mind always selectors should be unique one if any you know both selectors in you know um, two selectors are same which is going to get you no know, clumsy saying that where should i go where should i go to the text box one or text box two obviously which is throwing you uh, know it will not throw any exception but the functionality which is going to lead like you no know, a wrong way so always selectors should be unique one so a state so this is what is a state. These are all these are all the attributes. If you want to add, you can add it, or if you want to remove, you can you can remove also. Now see, so what is this uh, ID is the ID is control role equals to editable text ID equals to one. So let's check well, what is this no selector called the next one. Click here. Here we go. The parent is a constant. And ID is alone changing. This is how internally what I'm what I'm trying to say the IDs are nothing but when you design HTML, when you design HTML, where you, you might have given that so what is the ID for a particular control and what is the class you have been used over there. So everything is formed in the form of like no one uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, one XM, uh, XML format. The same thing selector has also. So I'm just getting the particular position and um, particular element selector. That means that so what is the ID for that? What is the type? What is the uh, attributes which is having? All those things I'm going to extract. So by using UI Path Studio, the selector is automatically selecting. By using UI Path Studio or by using UI Path Explorer, I can get the selector and these selectors are dynamically when I'm going to scrap particular element. 
so for any queries you guys are following me uh, yes uh, yeah mm, yes um no query more than just uh, cool. just um seeing this yeah super for time being, I'm just closing this. We'll discuss in more about UI Path Explorer when we talk about when, when when we are automating this application. Let's flip to the uh, UI elements here. That I'm just combining two chapters. I'm just working here. So basically, UI elements here. Right, I'm continuing with the previous uh, uh, chapter here. GUI pieces can be construct an application, obviously, right? So GUI pieces in the sense like checkbox or text fields or drop down list. So group of you know, fields and finally we are going to construct an application. So UI interaction can be split into two ways. I mean one is input and output. So what is basically input and what is basically output? So input actions, what we are doing input actions on the screen, I'm just clicking. I'm just clicking text typing. I'm just typing some value on the text boxes and hotkeys are keyboard. So what is the hotkeys are keyboard? I'm just pressing Control A. I'll enter something because basically, if it is in a mainframe application, so most probably right, they are using all keys, hotkeys. That means that hotkeys they have used over there to uh, uh, what I'm to operating the process. So what we have to do here. Yes, yes, I can able to press enter. I can able to press F1. I can able to type any key on the keyboard from the robo itself. This is called input action. So what is this mouse over? I'm just hovering the mouse and doing some operations or I'm right clicking. So these are all called what I'm trying to say input operations or input actions. So what basically output actions? Output actions are nothing but I'm getting text finding element on the screen, finding images. Obviously, I would output in the sense I want to scrap the data from the UI element. That's the example. So if you want to scrap this particular element, so what is this? This is output action, right? I'm just getting. Here input is nothing but what? You, you have, I want to type something here. So I want to type it. Or if you want to scrap this, that is called output. It is called input. Basically, this is what we are going to do with an automation. Either you are going to push data to the screen, or if you want to, or you can scrap the data or get the data from the UI element. That is what we are going to it's, do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is like, for example, we have a username and password, mm -hmm. and scrapping the username where it is on the screen is like output, uh, and providing the username is called the input, right? Exactly. Exactly. Here, if you want to get this someone at the data of example.com, this is nothing but an output. I'm going to scrap this one. Or if you want to type something here, that is called you are going to push input to the screen. That's all. Clear, Wenger? Yes, yes, yes. Fine. Yes, yes, yes. Now, let's come back to the part. So basically, right, uh, UI uh, activities properties. Basically, if you take any on uh, get text or uh, what I'm trying to set text, uh, we have a couple of you know, activities. So basically, if you put all activities, these are all called major properties for the all the activities. The first one is continue on error. That means that workflow should continue. The workflow, you know, right? What is the workflow? Workflow is nothing but a graphical representation of your business process. Okay, the workflow should continue even the activity throws an error. The activity is throwing error, but still I want to continue to process for the next operations. So how I want to do so this fields by using continue error I can proceed for that. So this field only supports boolean values, either true or false. If I give true. So what will happen by default this property contain false because I don't want continue when whenever any an exception I got it. But when you make it true, what will happen? Even the exception throws, I'll continue for the next set of elements to process. Delay after very very important. These properties are very very important. So delay after 
add a pulse after the activity in milliseconds that means that after performing some operation i want to give i want to give um, pulse to bot that one that means that i'm doing some operation i want to take some breathing time yes by using delay after and i can able to perform it delay before that means that before performing some operation i want to wait for some time i can use by using the delay before so this and all which is going to accept all the milliseconds values time out ms very very important activity specify the amount of time that means that i am specifying some amount of time to wait for a specified element to be found on i mean to say that before error is thrown so you see i am just telling an example i am expecting some element on the ui but the ui limit is not found but i have given okay is it uh... Yeah, Morgan, is it like something we are trying to open a web page on the screen? The web page is loading, 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 yes, but uh, the full web page does not load. Yeah. So the trying to find an object does not load. That case, uh, it will come out with a timeout uh, exactly error, right? Exactly correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. I'm just going to but basically when we talk about no web application, it is taking some time, loading concepts and all this, right? It will take some moment of time to load. So until or unless I have to wait it. So I so I'm just mentioned some time like 30 seconds. So even after 30 seconds, right? Even the page is not loaded, or then by the time it will go through an exception. But this 30 seconds, which is going to keep on hitting the page, is going to try whether the element is found or not, found or not, found or not. So that is a timeout MS property use. And one of the uh, important concept called here wait for ready. Obviously, when I go and go with any Windows application or a web application, so wait for ready we are keep we are we are free, very frequently we are going to use if wait for ready. so none here there is what we are discussing about page load or something when you select wait for ready none does not wait for the target to be ready or not i don't want bother about it that means that so wait for ready i am given none so what will happen even the page is not loaded i am trying to ex expect some ui element but is not found so it will throw immediately throw an exception if it is found it is going to perform some operations but interactive right it is wait until one part of application is loaded that means that we have couple of parts will be there in the screen right we have multiple widgets or something parts so interactive when you select interactive whenever any one part is loaded obviously what will happen so it is going to find some element on the screen if it is not it is going to throw an exception but always wait for ready we always choose the complete so what is the complete waits for entire app to be loaded it's fully loaded the page should be fully loaded then only what will happen all the controls might have loaded on the screen so that i can able to extract the data easily so i can able to find the element on the screen easily without loading that what will happen so it will going to throw an exception because bot is not wait until or unless bot doesn't know right when uh, the page is loaded or not bot doesn't know that so so this is one of the important even complete so wait for the entire app to be loaded so entire app is loaded but still ui element is not found that that time which is going to throw an exception saying that ui element is not found so this properties are pretty much important so we'll see this all properties so, will frequently more than one question yeah um here wait for ready option property option for example uh, usually the page to load on in the screen it takes 2 uh, seconds or 5 seconds maximum yeah due to some load on the server it takes that particular time 5 minutes yeah. let's take an example mm -hmm. so when you go by wait for ready option property property option it will wait uh, the entire span of 5 minutes until it finds the ui path element on the screen no which is not going to be there is what okay that case in that case right 5 uh, minutes and all it is uh, Five minutes. If you want to wait, here we have a created called custom activities. That means that we have written custom XAML, not activity. Custom is XAML we have written. That is called smart wait operations. The so smart wait is nothing but I am going to I am just going to pass some minutes of time to that. Okay, which is keep on loop through the timing. Okay, whenever you found that element, so what will happen? Uh, if element is found, yes, I am going to be able to perform else. Yeah, I have given some time, right? Five minutes. Same. If you are uh, configured five minutes, 
I'm going to pass five minutes to the particular UI element. So which is going to try uh, try this five minutes, even this you know uh, UI element is not found, then what will happen? Which is going to an exception. That is we can do. We have to do the customized code. Yes, it is feasible. Okay. So by using smart weight operations. Okay. So 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 this UI path can identify the element. Uh, UI element only by seeing on the screen. Exactly. Uh, uh, is it not uh, ensures that the element is loaded on the screen mm -hmm. based on the interaction with the application code or the web page code like HTML or something else? It will ensures only if it finds on the screen, right? Exactly. If it is not find, obviously a bot will not recognize that. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm just trying to understand: Is there any other way by interacting with the HTML code? For example, the the page is slowly loading. If you just inspect an element, you'll have the complete uh, details. So whatever is being loaded, what is getting loaded now? So with the with interacting with that code, it identifies whether is the element is loaded or not. No. No. It it will finds only on the screen. Doesn't interact with any code with respect to the uh, uh, to the web page or application, right? If it is very simple, I'm just adding to this point. If it is control is loaded, obviously inspect the, the code see in inspect. There obviously, I mean that uh, code meta is generated, right? Without you check it is without loading the element, you cannot see inspect inspect also, correct? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. No, that is correct. I'm just I'm trying to understand. Uh, does it go by code or uh, no. it should always find visibly on the uh, visible, screen? Visible on the screen. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Element is loaded. Okay. Then obviously you will get this select off. Or else it is an exception. Okay, okay, yeah. If it is web application, we are frequently getting exceptions because sometimes it's going to load fast, sometimes system fast, sometimes system the server is not responding slow. So obviously, what will happen? Mm -hmm. It's going to throw in uh, uh, late response issues, UI element not found issues. Okay. Uh, Ravi Garu, do you have anything? Fine, cool. Now, let us move on to the next. Now uh, here, so basically, we are going to talk about a container. So when we discuss about a uh, recording concept, right, where we will see what is a container. So a, a container gives a little more context for a button or a field. That means that, so um, when I'm trying to, here, right, just before we have seen one example, uh, hold on, let me open UA Path Explorer. going to select particular thing here. As the example, I am selecting the particular text box. See what is this? This is come up with my parent information. This is a parent. See here H W N plus Astic. By default this is come up with Astic. Astic in the sense here the couple of letters or characters would be here but what will happen which is going to replace with wildcard character because this are uh, assuming that UA path explorer itself is assuming these things are static things so that it has been replaced with wildcard characters. So what is the last note here? This is what I am looking for. Cost center text box. Cost center text box is nothing but so that is the last note of the element. Here the container when we talk about the container, so what will happen? So, which is going to come up with the parent information, which is not going to come up with the parent information. Container is basically which contain the parent information, and inside that you are pushing, you are going to interact with multiple controls. That means that we have a container called X Y Z, which contain information about this parent selector. We have to understand clearly here. The container will get the parent related information. But now inside the container, if we select a particular element, so which contains only particular UA element selector unknown. 
this we will see one example when we are discussing about uh, recording concepts now let's move on to this we have couple of containers available here the one is attachment attach window open application attach browser open browser these are all called the containers available in ui path so we will see what is attach window we will see what is attach browser and open application and open browser any queries so far fine let us do one small example i want to scrap some data on the screen first of all here i want to scrap this uh, email employee number on cost center how to scrap this element from the screen now let us flip to the way path studio let us create flow chart what is this A scrapping data demo Uh, Morgan, one question here. Yeah. So, yeah. tell me, tell Morgan, me. Morgan, one question here. Yeah. 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 Um. See, uh, the previous one we were uh, trying to identify the element UI element on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. So when it when the bot is identifying the element on the screen, mm -hmm. the the place is it's not a matter, right? It can be appear anywhere, any any side yes. left side or right side. Yes. Anyway, so that, that is what we okay. are not rely on the screen, uh, screen positions. So we are rely on the okay. electors. So wherever okay, that is what the advantage. Yeah, that is the one of the yeah. advantage. Here. Today I am expecting yeah. the test box would be here. Tomorrow this can okay. be push it into any of the corner of this page, but we should not okay. change the ID for that. If we change the ID for okay. particular new element, obviously which is not going to work because I am I am trying to expect txt email, but so what will happen they might have changed it to txt email address something they might have changed okay so if you change the particular you know uh, this uh, element id then obviously this will not work for you also even the positions also change wherever it is okay the id so that is what uh, the the quite different from the screen scrapping screen scrapping in the sense it has to be here in this particular position on the screen Screen scrapping. That is what we are. We don't. We don't need to bother about whether it is where it is exactly. Okay. But we have okay, to bother okay. about the ID. No, the selector. I mean that selector should not be changed. Okay. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll tell you in detail further. Now I want to extract these three information. So what is this email address, email alias, employee number, and cost center? I want to extract it. So what is the first step? If we want to extract this three information, first of all, we have to create a variable. So how to create a variable? So txt. So this is what for str email. This is the string. And what is the next one? The next one is employee number. Emp number. This should be integer. How we have to select integer? We have to select integer like this. Now, cost center. So this is integer, right? In cost center. So this should be integer. Now I have done it for the. Uh, what I am trying to say, declaration. Now, what is the first step? So what is the first step here? I wanted to extract the data. So for that we have a desired activity called get text. Get text is a control which is used to get the data from the UI element. Double click on it. So by defaultly, if you could see the properties, so nothing is here. I mean here, right? I see nothing. The remote ML selector, nothing is there. Now I'm just clicking indicate on the screen. We have to select which element you are trying to scrap it. Now my intention is I want to scrap the email alias text box. So whenever whenever mouse over here, obviously what will happen? So which is going to highlight this some text area. Just click on it. 
see here see the selector is got automatically generated from the studio see here so what is this this is the parent information and this is my automation id what is automation id here this is my id alias text box this text box today i am seeing alias text box so tomorrow if it is not changed to alias one text box what will happen just then this selector is invalid that is what i am trying to say here this id should not be changed wherever it is the i mean this text box is placed in any positions anywhere in the screen but it should be enabled and it should be loaded and this id should not be changed then automatically it is going to be work if id is changed or any attributes got changed for this particular selector then then this selector is not valid so that is here we have attached a live window right so when you click on the attached live window which is going to and just reselect this so here right see here so which is going to talk about anything any uh, data which is any i mean to say that uh, which is seems to be static so which is going to replace with while called selector so by using attached to live window also now we are pretty much good about what is a selector now it is selector has got you know created for this one now click ok after this wait for ready so obviously wait for ready should be complete for time being i am not using timeout emma since it is a web windows application so i am just i am not using time being and see here what is the value what is the value here so after scrapping this data where you want to push it so str email so why does this push we are pushed into str email now come back to the previous now come back to here and and just closing this i'm just going to display this one how we are going to display this one email just your email so by the way it is a string i don't want convert into to string again now again i'm doing for double click this one indicate on the screen i am going to extract the employee number so obviously this should be changed to complete and check the selector is properly selected or not yes employee number text box and click ok and this value where i want to store this int employee number yes i have stored this and just display this value after scrapping this and just displaying this so what is this I am displaying EMP number. So what is that? In TMPLY number dot two string. Since it is an integer, so we have to convert into two string here. The same operation I'll do it for the next one. Double click on it, indicate on the screen. So click on the cost center. So this should be and complete and where you want to push it i want to push it into int cost center now three values i have scrapped perfectly and i'm going to display the value the last value also click on the right line here so what is this cost center Now I am just giving you one um, best practice here. When you are trying to extract some data from the UI element, so make sure that just rename this one to get text of email. So here also get text of something will be there, right? So always this is one of the best practice. Just end, but this is nothing but EMP number. 
so by seeing this i can easily write read this one so get text which text you are getting i am getting the email tomorrow when you got some exception here so in the outline right so we can simply type it here and you can get it but in 2018 here we have we should find one text box here i think you can try from your machine we are able to find the text box inside the text box what will happen i can search some element so which is going to bring it to which is going to highlight particular element just the example if i type employee number here and I click enter employee number will be highlighted with yellow color box so now let's quickly save this application and quickly run this whether my bot is able to extract the data from the ua or not So my bot successfully scrapple the data. So email someone under example.com employee number cost center. Here we go. I am able to extract the, all the data from here. Any queries so far? Um, Mohan. Um, yeah. The the UA element you scrapped from one web page, right? Yeah. So. Uh, first, we have to open the web page, right? Uh, or how 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 did Bot know mm -hmm. uh, here this particular tab the web page is opened because you didn't define uh, any instruction for the Bot to open the web page and then go and find the UI element, right? Exactly, exactly. So basically, right, we have a scratch. We have to do scratching. So what is that first thing? So we have to find that. What I'm trying to say. Um, page is loaded or not or page is open or not how we have to do that so i'll explain you that one best the practices so normally basically we used to write open application concept okay open application or open browser application for opening this application where i'm going to provide the path for this exe this is windows application right so i'm just going to provide the path for that that we will see in upcoming sessions and here when i'm navigating this particular page i just want to ensure that whether i'm in this page whether i'm landed this page or not how we are going to ensure this we have element exist actually So element exists. So which is going to accept boolean operation. So first of all, let's create one bool variable. Bool page is loaded or is element is found. Bool is element exists. Now let's take boolean this and just double click on it, indicate on the screen. Just an example, anyone, any element, just take this, this element. Very first time it is enough, where you land at a particular page, very first time I want to check whether this page got loaded. That means that before extracting this data, I want to check whether the element is got loaded. Just click on it. Now. Here, right, interactive, complete. Here, you will give the exist. So, what is this? Bold is the element exist. Now, come back to here. Here, just work on the decision. So, what is the flow decision will be taking here? Here. So here the condition. So what is the condition? Bool is element exists. If it is exists, 
then what we have to do I want to do this or else I want to here element is not exist. Clear. So this element exists will help you ensure that whether we are landed in particular page or not. Save this and quickly rerun this and we just here so I'm just displaying page loaded or not that means that our element exists simply you can see what is this more dot to string just time being that I just want to check if it's got loaded or not okay and then we can save this and run it see the output so element like this true ok if it is true then I am able to expand in this let us see the false scenario also. I'm just clicking cancel. Now I am trying to run this because that element is not there, right? So I'm just running this. It is trying to fetch that element. That element is not found. Then let's see what what is going to see. What is going to show us? Here we go element exists fault element is not exist that is what i have written here this word is. any queries swing it here a uh, moment um you are trying to scrap one windows application right it's not a web page right yeah so when you when you when you open the exe it opens as uh, like on console where you have where you are going to scrap the elements right yeah right so uh, as you said, what um, what exe we have to first trigger and open the console that we'll be looking into later, right? Yeah, that will. How to define that? Yeah, it's not a problem. Okay. Here also we can do it. Okay. Thing. Here we have to just open. Uh, yeah, that I'll, I'll explain you. Okay, no issues. Tomorrow. Okay. So uh, mm. tomorrow we'll see that. Uh, I'm just launching this uh, mm, this first one. If it is this loaded, I'm going to click create expense. If it is create, then what I want to do, I I want to extract all this information. This table information is very really important since this is a Windows application. Here, how we have to scrap the element from here. This is very very important. This we will see tomorrow class. Okay. I'll not so open here, this application. Um, and keep it. I'll, I'll everything is. I'm just simply closing this. I'm killing all the process before opening my. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, then, then I'm then. going to actually open where I'm going to perform my operation for tomorrow's example. Okay, mm. okay, and here in the email alias and employee number and cost center, mm. these are all the values, right? Actual someone, someone at explore.com, these are all the values of the particular attribute, right? Yes, yes. So when you define, go and identify this particular value mm. to the bot, you mm. are actually hard coding this value to the bot, right? So tomorrow I might have a different employee number. That too has to scrap and uh, fetch the data. Let's yeah. take an example. Yeah. In that case we cannot define this value as an out code to the, uh, you to the program, code. right? You not code. So irrespective okay. of then the it looks like yeah, you see uh, what I'm trying to say. Um, here I'm just looking cancel. You can type different value here and just click create. So what will happen? Whatever the type of value is different, it's changing here, right? Got it. Can you do it with me? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you can you please uh, come again? Uh, I didn't. And just we can cancel. Cancel someone, right? Okay. Fine. I'm just clicking here. So obviously, whatever the type of there, it is it's changing here. So uh, always write the values. We should not assume that this is no static values. The value of this one will be vary, but the selectors will should be same. You got my point? No, that is that is I got. Mm -hmm. But when you initially when you write the code when you design the part, mm -hmm. you scrap only the value, mm -hmm. right? That is why uh, it says someone at for someone at yeah. example dot com. Yeah. But now Venkat at for dot example dot com. Yeah. So how it recognize when the values keep changing? Uh, that is what I told you. Here I don't want bother about the value. Now let me rerun my bot. Okay. So previously you expected what you expected. You were expected someone. Now it is got changed to Venkat at the end of example dot com. Here bot doesn't doesn't uh, bother about the value of the particular control. Okay. Here value will keep on changing. Value we cannot always predict the same value, right? We are login user based on the login user. So obviously, what will happen? The email ID will be changed. Correct. So here, I don't want to bother about the value of the control. I have to bother about only selector. Selector should be same. Irrespective of the selector, which is going to get the value, whatever the value is present over there, it is going to pick it. It is going to scrap it. That's all. Which makes sense, right? Yeah. That that is that is why mm -hmm. uh, when we identify the UI path, I mean the UI element on the screen. Um, you 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 are showing me the uh, this this console uh, coding, right? HTML coding in the below. Mm -hmm. There we did not see the actual value over there, right? Only the control we, we could see, see. We can see value also. Inspect. Yeah. But you, I think we can see value also. Good thing you can see if you use a view source. I think this is a Windows application. Basically, if it's a web application, so what will happen? I can see if it is uh, right click and open it. Let's say example, this one right click, view source. You can see everything including value. Control step I can see. Okay, so uh, we are defining to the bot just uh, just a location. Yeah. We won't say in this particular location. The, in the location, the value can be anything. Yeah, that is what the selector. Okay. I am going to talk about only selector. This selector, I have I have got it. So whatever the okay, value okay, is inside this, I don't want to bother about this. It is going to. Okay, got that. Yeah, yeah, that take and okay. assign into variable and display yeah. it. Okay. That's all that is Basically, in real time, but most probably we will do the same thing in very few things. Okay. 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 I think Abala is not joined today. Yes, Morgan. I was keep try calling him, but he did not pick. <laughs> He's working till three o'clock, four o'clock. Uh, so I think that's his problem. <laughs> I think yeah, that's it for today. Then um, tomorrow is the only important example. I'm going to complete automated this and from the scrap. I'm going to open the application. Uh, before you open any application, is open like this. I'll fill it and I'll open. Mm -hmm. it. So uh, real time, exactly how we are going to do in real time. The same thing. I'm going to automate. Okay.